appears as incandescent, and the objective sphere of fire is but the manifestation of that internal combustion. This central heat radiates its warmth to all parts of the system by means of a triple channel, or through its rays of approach, which in their totality express to us the idea of the heat of the sun. 1. 2. The Akasha, itself the talist matter, or substance animated by latent heat. Electricity, substance of one polarity, and energized by one of the three aspects logoic. To express it more occultly, substance showing forth the quality of the cosmic lord whose energy it is. 3. Light rays of pranic aspect, some of which are being now recognized by the modern scientists. They are but aspects of the latent heat of the sun as it approaches the earth by a particular line of least resistance. When the term, channel or ray of approach, is used, it means approach from the center of solar radiation to the periphery. What is encountered during that approach such as planetary bodies, for instance will be affected by the Akashic current, the electrical current, or the pranic current in some way, but all of these currents are only the internal fires of the system when viewed from some other point in universal, though not solar, space. It is, therefore, obvious that this matter of fire is as complex as that of the rays. The internal fires of the solar system become external and radiatory when considered from the standpoint of a planet, while the internal fires of the planet will affect a human being as radiation in exactly the same way as the pranic emanations of his etheric body affect another physical body as radiatory. The point to be grasped in all these. 60. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on Cosmic Fire Aspects of that one and all have to do with matter or substance, and not with mind or spirit. B. The planet. Deep in the heart of the planet such a planet is the Earth. For instance are the internal fires that occupy the central sphere, or the caverns which filled with incandescent burning make life upon the will possible at all. The internal fires of the moon are practically burned out, and, therefore, she does not shine safe through reflection, having no inner fire to blend and merge with light external. These inner fires of the earth can be seen functioning, as in the sun, through three main channels. 1. Productive substance or the matter of the planet Vitalis by heat. This heat and matter together act as the mother of all that germinates, and as the protector of all that dwells therein and thereon. This corresponds to the Akasha, the active Vitalis matter of the solar system, that nourishes all as does a mother. 2. Electrical fluid. A fluid which is latent in the planet though is yet but little recognized. It is perhaps better expressed by the term, animal magnetism. It is the distinctive quality of the atmosphere of a planet, or its electrical ring pass not. It is the opposite pole to the solar electrical fluid, and the contact of the two in there. Correct manipulation is the aim perhaps unrealized of all scientific endeavor at this time. 3. That emanation of the planet which we might term planetary prana. It is that which is referred to when one speaks of the health-giving qualities of Mother Nature, and which is back of the cry of the modern physician, when he wisely says, back to the earth. It is the fluidic emanation of this prana which acts upon the physical body, though in this case not via the etheric body. It is ab, T-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S. 6. 
61. Sorted through the skin purely and the pores are its line of least resistance. C. The man. At the base of the spine lie hid the fires of the human system, or the internal fires of the microcosm. The center is located there, and from it the radiations go forth along the three channels, recognizable in the spine. 1. Bodily warmth, the channel along which the heat radiates and which finds the goal of its attention to be the heating of the corporeal frame. This vitalization of the dense matter of the body finds its correspondence in the systemic akasha, an planetary productive substance. 2. Nervous response. This is the vitalizing tenuous fluid which applies itself to the stimulation of the nervous centers, and which creates electrical response to contact between the nerves and the brain. It should now be more closely studied. It corresponds to systemic electricity, and to planetary electricity. 3. Pranic emanation. The emanation, via the etheric body, which corresponds in man to solar prana and to planetary prana. This demonstrates principally in the health aura and has not to do with magnetic qualities, as generally interpreted when considering a personality, or man as a unit. I make this repetition as it is very necessary that no mental confusion exists between that magnetism which is a spiritual emanation and that which is purely animal. It might be wise here to point out that this triple manifestation of fire demonstrates in the astral and mental bodies likewise, having to do with the substance of those bodies. We might express this fire in its triple manifestation as the sum total of the essential fire, or life activity of the third logos. It should be carefully borne. 62 ATRE ATISCONCOSMICFIRE. In mind that the manifestation of the work of the three Logoi is the expression of the mind of some cosmic entity. In the same way, the seven planetary entities, the seven heavenly men, are seven Logoi, likewise cosmic beings, who in their totality form the body of the threefold Logos. We have, therefore, 1, 2, A, B, C, 3, the indifferentiated Logos of cosmic entity, the Logos, threefold in manifestation. The Cosmic Lord of Willpower. The Cosmic Lord of Love and Wisdom. The Cosmic Lord of Active Intelligence. The Triple Logos, Sevenfold in Manifestation, i.e., the Seven Planetary Logoi. 181920. 18T. Suva Rao says on page 20, of esoteric writings, as a general rule, whenever seven entities are mentioned in the ancient occult science of India in any connection whatsoever, you must suppose that those seven entities came into existence from three primary entities and that these three entities again are evolved out of a single entity or monad. To take a familiar example, the seven colored rays in the solar ray are evolved out of three primary colored rays, and the three primary colors coexist with the four secondary colors in the solar ray. Similarly the three primary entities which brought man into existence coexist in him with the four secondary entities which arose from different combinations of the three primary entities. In Christian terminology these are the three persons of the Trinity, and the seven spirits which are before the throne. Compare, our God is a consuming fire. Pep. 
19 inches I have already said in speaking of this logos, that it was quite possible that it was the logos that appeared in the shape of the first Dian Chohan, or planetary spirit, when the evolution of man was recommenced after the last period of inactivity on this planet, as stated in Mr. In its book, Esoteric Buddhism, and after having set the evolutionary current in motion, retired to the spiritual plane congenial to its own nature, and has been watching since over the interests of humanity, and now and then appearing in connection with a human individuality for the good of mankind. For you may look upon the logos represented by Krishna as one belonging to the same class as the logos which so appeared. In speaking of himself Krishna says, Chap. X, verse 6. The seven great rishis, the four preceding manus, partaking of my nature were born from my mind, from them sprang, was born the human race in the world. He speaks of the Sapta Rishis and of the Manus as his Manasaputras, or mind-born sons, which they would be if he was the so-called Prajapati, who appeared on this planet and commenced the work of evolution. The Theosophist, Volume 8, P. 443. 20 The following tabulations should be borne in mind. Seven branch races make. One subrace seven subraces make. One root race. Seven root races make. One world period. T H E I N T E R N A L F I R E S. 63. Each of these cosmic entities is, in his essential essence, fire, each manifests as fire in a threefold manner. In point of time the cosmic lord of active intelligence, considered from the standpoint of cosmic evolution, is more evolved than his two brothers. He is the life of matter, its latent internal fire. His is the fire essence that lies at the heart of the sun, of the planet, and of man's material forms. He is the sum total of the past. The Lord of Cosmic Love now seeks union with his brother, and, in point of time, embodies all the present. He is the sum total of all that is embodied, he is conscious existence. He is the Sun Divine in his life, and nature evolves through every existent form. The Lord of Cosmic Love holds to the future within his plans and consciousness. They are all three the sons of one father, all three the aspects of the one God, all three are spirit, all three are soul, and all three are rays emanating from one cosmic center. All three are substance, but in the past one Lord was the elder son, in the present another Lord comes to the fore, and in the future still another. But this is so only in time. From the standpoint of the eternal now, none is greater nor less than another, for the last shall be first, and the first last. Out of manifestation time is not, and free from objectivity states of consciousness are not. The fire of spirit is the essential fire of the first lord of love plus the fire of the second logos of love. These two cosmic entities blend, merge, and demonstrate as soul, utilizing for purposes of manifestation the aid of the third logos. The three fires blend and merge. In this fourth round and on this fourth globe of our planetary scheme, the fires of the third logos of intelligent matter are fusing somewhat with the fires of cosmic. Seven world periods make. Seven rounds make. Seven chain periods make. Ten planetary schemes make. One round. One chain period. One planetary scheme. 
one solar system.